period. Here to talk about REITs and the fact that they're neat, I think in his mind, and he's got the rationale behind it, Jack McCabe, CEO of McCabe Research and Consulting. Jack, we're so glad you could spend some of your Friday with us here. Thank you for inviting me. So, the bottom line, should we just get out of the stock market and turn to property in the form of real estate investment trusts? I think over the next three or four years that real estate investment trusts and other real estate investment vehicles present an excellent opportunity for return on investment and I would say probably is going to surpass the, the stock markets, uh, commodities and other type of investment structures. So. Uh, REITs are a good investment, of course, they're backed up and secured by real estate property, which we know is skyrocketing in many markets around the country, uh, and we expect that it will be for another three years or so at least. Talk to us about this idea of the corporatization of residential America. What is that, what is that talking about? Well, since the, the boom and the bust um, and the Great Recession, What's happened in our real estate markets is not a return to normal. In fact, it's anything but. It's very abnormal. First, we saw the hedge funds step in and buy many of the vacant and unsold condominiums throughout the country, especially down here in South Florida. But what's happened now is with all the foreclosures around the country, millions of them, and many in close concentrated areas, the hedge fund has seen an opportunity to buy single family homes, rent them out, and that they're much more easily to maintain and manage now. So while they would never endeavor in single family residential before, Blackstone has invested over seven and a half billion dollars. Mm. Colony Capital and many others, there's well over $200 billion that has been invested in residential single family homes. And what they're doing now is many of them are renting them out. <clears throat> at first they bought these homes at bargain basement prices, foreclosures primarily, but now we saw a switch last year in their strategy, and now they're buying everything they can get their hands on. They're gobbling up properties, not only for closures and short sales, but now MLS listings. And not only are they paying full price, but they're actually paying, in many cases, 25 to 50% above current market value. Now, you might ask yourself why a bunch of smart hedge fund guys would be overpaying for things. But what it does is it bolsters all the holdings that they bought previously at bargain basement prices and now it sets the barometer for appraisers to use in the future where it lifts everyone's market values. Well, for, forgive me, Jack, but as I hear you outline this, it sounds like a legal form of collusion. Well, let's say it's a non-conspiratorial summation of a lot of endeavors. Spoken like a true economist, uh, uh, past performance not indicative of future results, but with these permutations and to hear that REITs are coming in to, to the market for single family residences, what does this do overall to, to real estate markets? For example, for the rest of this year, since there have been such uh, notoriously slow housing starts around the country through this first quarter. Mm -hmm. Well, what we saw last year was wherever the hedge funds were most active, saw the highest amounts of appreciation in those markets. So San Francisco, Orange County, Inland Empire in California, Las Vegas and Phoenix, here in Florida, Orlando, Tampa and South Florida. Here we saw a 21 percent increase in, sing in uh, condominium prices and a 28 percent increase in single-family homes in one year. Now that equates to about six or seven years in normal initiation. Mm -hmm. And it's because the funds have been buying it's 70 percent uh, uh, investors and it's about 70 to 75 percent cash transactions and they literally have kind of elbowed out the individual owner occupier that's a, you know a question i was going to ask you does this signify a, a move from the traditional model of american home ownership where more people are going to be kind of forced to rent because these prices are coming up based on these investors basically forcing more uh, potential homeowners out of becoming homeowners Absolutely, and unfortunately it's going on all over the country right now. Um, when they're paying 25 to 50 percent above market value as an individual homeowner probably needing a mortgage, you just cannot compete. What's interesting is, is sales numbers have increased and prices have increased. The actual percentage of home ownership has dropped. And you say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because uh, here we sit in Palm Beach County, the largest homeowner in Palm Beach County is Blackstone. The largest homeowner in Broward to our south, the Fort Lauderdale metro area, 
is, uh, is a smaller hedge fund by the name of Delavico with a lot of Canadian investors. This has gone on all over the country now. And because so many people lost their home to foreclosure, had credit dings, lost their jobs, and we went from giving mortgages to anybody with a heartbeat that could fog a mirror to now where even doctors and lawyers have a hard time qualifying. <clears throat> it's made it difficult at best to get a mortgage, but then when you go to buy a home, you find out that there's four hedge funds have already placed cash offers and, and that they're willing, they told the realtor mm -hmm. that they'll go ahead and beat any offer that's turned in. Which leads me to a practical question. In our personal situation, we've got a house out in Arizona. Is now the time to sell? Yeah, I think so. It, uh, now, and I would say, you've probably got a, a good two-year window, possibly three. I really expect the funds are going to continue to buy in these marketplaces. If you're in the Phoenix, Scottsdale, Paradise Alley market in, in Phoenix or in Tucson, still a, a lot of hedge fund activity in those markets. As long as they keep buying, prices are going to continue to go up. Wow. But look for that to end sometime between now and 2017. And then we could see a big fall in a lot of areas. Well, we'll bring you back before 2017. Uh, Jack McCabe, we appreciate your insights. And this is personally some news that I can use. So I really want to thank you. And we'll have you back real soon. And thank the, you, gentlemen. The flip side is, you know, if you, if you, if you sell your house and you've got to buy one with the price is high as well. So there's a give and take always with the that's real right. estate market. And that's, right. that's why we got to take a closer look at it. We'll be back with more here on America's Forum. We want to hear from you. What's your take on the real estate market right now? And uh, other investors getting involved in re residential real estate. Reach out to us on Twitter at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. Find us on email, connect at NewsmaxTV.com or find us on Facebook, Facebook.com backslash Newsmax TV.